Good morning and welcome to the National Institutes of Health campus. Uh, my name is Kenny Floyd. I'm the director of the Division of Environmental Protection here at NIH. Uh, we're honored to host today's meeting on human connection and the roles of materials and human performance and research translation in health-centered buildings. Uh, we also want to thank the USGBC Building Council for sponsoring this event along with the American College of Sports Medicine and the American Institute of Architects. Um, you know, NIH is the largest source of funding for the federal medical research in the world. Uh, NIH creates hundreds of thousands of high quality jobs by funding thousands of scientists and universities and research institutions in every state across America and around the globe even. Additionally, we have about 6,000 scientists right here on this campus that, that work in laboratories, most of which are on this campus. Um, and we're also home to NIH's clinical center, which is the largest hospital in the world totally dedicated to clinical research. <clears throat> I just wanted to share real briefly uh, some breaking news that may be of interest. Uh, NIH researchers have used a genetically diverse mo mouse model, which can be used to predict a range of responses to chemical exposures that might be observed in human populations. This is breaking news. It was just recently put up on the NIH website, so you can uh, look there if you want more information. Um, but researchers at our National Institute of Environmental Health Sciences identified specific genes or chromosomal regions that make some mice more susceptible and others more resistant uh, to toxic effects of benzene. And knowing this genetic makeup of the mice allows the researchers to pinpoint regions involved in susceptibility or resistance to the chemical exposure and subsequently look for related genetic regions in human chromosomes. So this is breaking research which may have a bearing on some of the things that we're talking about today. Uh, the NIH Office of Research Facilities, which my group is under, uh, focuses on decommissioning of buildings here prior to our renovation and removing a lot of the toxic materials that have uh, been put into our buildings over time before we actually do the demolition of the building. So we try to uh, address the chemicals before exposures can happen. Um, we also have, uh, have been working on a substances of concern list which can, you, can be used to help decide on smarter choices for our purchases and for which the NIH was just recognized by the Presidential Green Gov Award this past week. Um, we hope that today's session provides some insight, raises some questions, and leads to tools which will make our building occupants healthier. Uh, and with that, I'd like to uh, introduce now Dr. Charlene Baer. Uh, she's the Chairman and Chief Science Officer of Hygienia Sciences, LLC, and Principal Research Scientist to the Georgia Tech Research Institutes. And Dr. Baer is one of the co-founders of HIBR. She also has expertise in indoor environment and exposures research and an interface between healthy indoor environments and energy efficiency. Please welcome Dr. Baer. Good morning. I don't have any slides yet anyway. Um, I just want to welcome you to, and thank you for coming, especially the federal employees for giving up a, a day of vacation. Um, a lot of people have traveled a long way and uh, we've got a lot of empty chairs but we're not supposed to have them so I presume people will be coming in late. Uh, I don't know about you but I got stuck in the line in security. But um, t today is, is exciting. Uh, this is a unique way to do this. You will see four panels. Um, and the, the presentations from the panelists are very, very short. Uh, five minutes is what they were given. 
so they have to make their points quickly. The rest of the time on each panel is discussion, and it's discussion not just among the panelists, it's discussion with you. We want dialogue today. We want to initiate the dialogue. Um, somebody last night said this is like a gigantic breakout session, but we don't break away. Um, so the idea is to talk. Um, we would like you to keep your remarks, uh, give your question or your discussion in one or two sentences. We're asking the panelists to do the same thing. The idea is to create dialogue that will walk out of this room and continue for the next year or for however long that we can do it. Um, one of the other things we're doing, you will see that we're really pushing performance and movement. At the end of every panel, you must stand up and give a standing ovation. Um, at some point during the day, you will be led through a brief exercise session. We're going to, we want you up and standing as much as possible. Um, when, you know, get up and walk around the room. We don't care. Um, the more you move, the happier we are because we, and you will hear more of it today about why you need to be moving, standing, not sitting. So we want to push this that you're not. Um, today's focus, uh, this is the second HIBR conference. Well, one last year was more general. This one is more focused. Um, it has a materials basis and how do materials impact you. The first panel will look at the fundamentals. The second panel will start to discuss how do we um, improve in performance, moving people into, you know, getting you to move. How do materials improve performance um, and attitude and so that you work better, you concentrate better, you feel better. Um, and the third panel will start what, what decisions do we need to make to make health-centered buildings more of a focus, less of a focus with energy focus. And the fourth panel looks at wh how are we having problems trans and what can we do to improve research translation. Um, it's, it's, a, it's a major issue. Uh, you know, as an academician, you know, our, our work product is a, is a journal article. Well, that does not get the research that the governments have paid for out to the buildings um, or out to wherever it needs to be. And so how can we improve this, this work? We are a very interdisciplinary group, not just among the panelists, among everyone that's out here. We want to break down the silos. That's one of the purposes of this. So get ready to have a fun day, an active day, and in a very intellectual day. And now I'm going to bring up Charles Bloomberg, who is the real founder of HIBR, and he's going to tell you a little bit about HIBR. He is a research architect with NIH. Good morning again, everybody. Welcome back, those of you who were here last year. Uh, we have a slightly different group of presenters, and uh, that's because we have moved in some other directions. We still stay in contact with probably each and every one of them. And it's uh, always uh, been my pleasure to be able to be sort of at the crossroads of where all this activity is taking place just by nature of the job. Um, and I think that uh, there are so many people that I could personally thank right here. It would take us all my three minutes and more <laughs> to do that. Uh, I think our real purpose has become more and more defined as time goes on, and that is that we really have become a large networking group. Networking in the sense that we bring people together from a variety of disciplines and uh, we find out as much as we can about what they do and how they do it, as much as they can share with us. Um, we allow them to, and we encourage them to provide their papers and their research on a regular monthly basis, which as most of you know is uh, just the hour, 1.30 to 2.30, every first Wednesday in every month, and we've been doing this for almost four and a half years. So it never gets old, it always keeps its level of excitement and enthusiasm, and uh, I think that the group that you're going to hear from today is going to add more and more interest and fuel to the direction that we've chosen to take for ourselves. Um, we have to remember that the NIH role, the federal role, can only be in the form of liaison. We can guide, we can encourage, 
we can suggest, but basically it's the better than 80% of our volunteers that carry the real load. Um, we're happy that we have other, many other agencies involved and we stay coordinated with them. After this meeting, within a week or two, we will convene, as we did last year, our own NIH group to get their uh, take on what happened here today. Uh, we have a court stenographer, which is different than we had last year to do the translation. Um, and so we don't want, we're, we're not going to lose any words, I assure you. We also have two cameras. So if you can note around, see where they are, and you get into Q&A, we want to record as much as we possibly can uh, of what you said and how you delivered what you had to say. And the second part is what Charlene alluded to is that we have, this is not a place where if you didn't get to be a speaker that you become the speaker because you, you a self-appointed speaker. Uh, if you can keep your time down to a minimum, just get your question. I think uh, when Chris gets on, he's going to give you a, a little bit of background on how that all works so that we kind of stay true, going to stay kind of in gear, in place. Um, and uh, I guess the last piece of information I want to share is that we're working very hard on a charter. We've been working on it for a long time. It's still in the hands of our attorneys, our NIH attorneys, to make sure that it's in government ease. And uh, we feel that's very, very important in order to have, in order to cover the many outside interest groups who are interested in becoming a part of this organization because they see the value of it. I think, uh, as Kenny and Charlene alluded to, this past year has been a real year of growth, exceptional growth in terms of members and in terms of member organizations and, so and associations. So with that, I get my bell. I guess I'm ready to move on <laughs> to the next uh, presenter. That we